Testing, testing, one, two, three. All right, all right. Good morning, good morning. How are you guys? It's great to have you all here. We are ready and waiting once again for the stock market open, the opening bell. My name is Land Turner, for those of you who don't know. I'm a former instructor at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, Chicago Board of Trade, Education Center, uh, currently an instructor of finance at Utah Tech University. And so I come here on YouTube, and I've been doing it every day for the last little while. And um, this is where we have our lab for the university, and this is where we come and bring all of our students because we teach at the university and we want to practice what we preach, and we come here, and this is where we live and learn the stuff we learn in class. So uh, teach a lot of the different things in class. We teach how to trade the futures market. We teach how to trade options. We teach how to trade, <clears throat> how to day trade. We do all kinds of fun stuff. So in this, in this class, uh, it's a great time for you to come and learn. If you're a brand new trader, this is a place for you to be. If you're an experienced trader, I think you can pick up some great tips and tricks on how to make your trading better. So we've got something for everyone today out on the little marquee, the little key out there. Um, we said we were going to go look at explosive stocks and how to trade them with options. Now, first thing in the morning, what we like to do is we like to come into the futures market and we like to look a little bit at the opening bell and just kind of watch the indexes. Up in the upper left-hand corner, you can see we have the 15-minute S&P 500 chart. That's where we like to trade in the futures market. Now, this is the futures market, and the reason we like to trade over here is because the futures market, I'll change that little marquee up so you can see it kind of tells you a little bit about what we're doing. We're not trading in the stock market, even though we are trading the stock indexes. So we get new people coming in all the time. And I kind of like to just kind of give a highlight of what we're doing here. Up in the upper left-hand corner is the S&P 500. Although it's not in the stock market, it's in the futures market. And we can trade this out of Chicago, not out of New York. And there are no pattern day trading rules. And so there's no minimum account balance. Well, <clears throat> you have to have an account balance, but uh, the minimum account balance is not 25000 We recommend if you can trade the minis right or you, gotta, you should probably start with at least 5000 And if you're going to trade the micro minis, which are 10 times smaller, you can open your account with as little as 2000 And you can trade to your heart's content. I mean, there's no limit on how many times you can trade a day. There's no pattern day trading rules. There's no limit on how <clears throat> often you can churn the money that you've got so you can trade it over and over and over again. There's none of that kind of stuff. So we don't have those hampered problems over here in the futures market, which is why we like to come over here and do our day trading. Plus, we got a lot of uh, leverage over here. So we trade on margin. And so this allows us to be able to use a small amount of money to make a large amount of money. Of course, anytime you can make a large amount of money with a small amount of money, you can lose a large amount of money with a small amount of money as well. So it cuts both ways. So we trade very carefully, very cautiously, a um, little bit different strategy than what you might uh, do over in the stock market where you have no leverage and maybe you're in a cash account and probably are dealing with uh, day trading pattern rules if you don't have a $25,000 account. So a little bit different trading style over here. And so that's what we teach and we learn that over here. And so come and join us. We'd love to have you. What we're going to do right now is we're just going to watch the opening bell. Now the futures market doesn't really have an opening bell. Well, it does. It's just in the afternoon. It's not in the morning. <clears throat> and the reason is because these are 23 hour traded markets. They trade 23 hours a day. And so you can trade them all night long. You can trade them all morning long. So, but the stock market does have an opening bell. And so since these are the indexes of stocks, uh, up at the upper right hand corner, you can see you have the Dow 30 bottom right corner. We have the NASDAQ 100 and in the Russell, uh, bottom left corner, we have the Russell 2000. And so these stocks, these stock indexes are, um, you know, going to be affected by that morning bell over in New York. So that's what we like to do. The morning bell's fun to watch. It's about ready to ring here. About what do we got? About, oh, there it goes. I think that's it right there. Oh, yep, that's it. The morning bell just kicked off. There we go. We're going to watch that thing kick around a little bit. Usually what happens on the morning bell and these indexes is the market shoot up and down a little bit. Um, sometimes it's based on what the news was. So we like to look at the news every morning. Uh, so here's the news and we're going to come in. Let me make my screen a little larger for you. There we go. So this is the news. We got building permits came in at 630 this morning and the forecast was 1.51 million and the actual was 1.48 million. So that's negative news. All right. Previous was 1.52. Now, oftentimes I'll say we don't know whether the news is, even though it shows negative here, whether this can make the market go down or up. We just know that it's going to move the market. And it's a nice red mover right here. This is Trading Economics. It's a website we go to to get our news for the markets. 
You can see Fed Chair Powell speaks today at 11.15. That's going to move the market pretty big. We're going to find out what he has to say at 11.15. And, um, you know, so the market will probably be, it'll move around a little bit here in the morning, but then it'll probably be a little bit quiet. That's usually what we see is a quiet market until the Fed speaks. And then once the Fed speaks, and he's spe speaking at 11.15 my time, that's UTC 6. So depending on where you're at in the country, I'm in Utah, so this is mountain time. Is going to depend on what time he speaks for you. All right. So again, that's uh, eleven fifteen a.m. Mountain Time. So uh, what generally happens with these markets first thing in the morning is they bounce around a little bit because a lot of people trade in the middle of the night when the markets are closed for the stock market. So what they do is they have a stock account. They pull up these silly little things. I don't know. Maybe one or two of you guys have these things. They're called cell phones, and uh, they like to bang on them in the middle of the night after the markets are closed and buy and sell stocks. And so because they tell you, hey, well, that's not going to fill till tomorrow morning. Are you okay with that? You say yes. And then what happens is it comes in and in the morning they try to match up all those trades from people who are trading in the middle of the night, right? Uh, they get home from work. They're watching TV. They're surfing around on their little iPhones and they start to buy some stocks. And so that's what's happening right now. So the market kind of just bounces all over the place. It's not really a trend. It's not really... It's just filling orders. That's all it's doing, just matching up all those morning orders. Uh, and so the market goes a little crazy. So we kind of like to sit around and wait and watch on that. And it also gives us a little bit of an idea how, how much the market's going to move throughout the day, or at least in the morning session. And it's sometimes that market goes crazy, and there's a lot of movement and a lot of action. And sometimes it's pretty quiet. Like this morning, it's really super quiet. This is not a big open. Um not that the markets aren't moving. They are. They're making some moves down here. You can see from the scaling that that move right there was a four hundred and twenty dollar move in those in those two minutes. So it dropped down and you know flushed down. Then it's rallying back up. And that, and that's just the it's just everybody you know it's just filling all those orders. So those aren't really trends. Although the market can turn and trend out of that. They can you know make some moves out of there. And sometimes you look back and feel kind of bad that you didn't get in. But those markets are moving quite big. And you say the $420 land, wow, that's a lot of money. How much did I have to put up to make that kind of money? <clears throat> well, if you come over here in the key, you can see that the day margin, uh, well, on that one, it's not being reported, but you can see right here, this is a micro mini. Uh, so it's a micro mini, it's 10 times seller. So you can see it's only $100, but that's not going to be the $400 move. That's going to be from here to here. That was a $78 move with a $100 investment. So for every $100 you put in, you made $78 from peak to valley. Now this one here is the Dow, and you can see if we're gonna draw that one the same thing from peak to valley right here, that was $310, and it was a $750 investment. So we're on day margin on peak right now between 6.45 to 2.30 p.m. You put up $750, and you would have made $310 if you'd have got in at the peak and got out of the at the valley. That's a $310 move on a $750 investment. That's why we like it over here. But you have to also be careful because it can rip your wheels off if you get in and you're wrong. Just a very small move can take a lot of money away from you based on your investment size or your percent, right? So we want to be careful. Now, that's why we have different market sizes in here. Up here in the left-hand corner, you see we got the 15-minute S&P. I like to trade options on that one. That's why I have it on the 15-minute chart. I like to use that kind of as our bellwether to kind of give us the idea of which direction the trend of the markets are going right now. And then down here in the bottom right-hand corner, we have the NASDAQ. I generally keep it at the micro mini, and it's because it is such a big market that um, we like to scale that one down a little bit and trade it with the micro mini. And then the Russell, it's a little bit smaller market. Uh, it's the smallest of the four, but we put it on the mini, so it's going to be bigger than the NASDAQ, which is, if we were trading the mini, would be actually bigger than the rest of them. And then the uh, we got the mini Dow, which is also a nice market. I like to trade the mini Dow on occasion. And again, it's $750 per contract. If you think the market's going to go down, you'd go ahead and place your order in here, and we'd just go ahead and sell one. And then we place our stop in here very quickly right behind the market if it doesn't just go in our favor because we're investing such a large amount of money or, you know, risking such a large amount of money, um, it can take your wheels off real quick. So you just want to get right back out if you're wrong. So we want the market to decisively move in our favor. If it doesn't, we just get right back out. That's the name of the game. we got all of our indicators. We've got our different recurring price patterns. We look for higher highs and lower highs. And we just get in, 
If the market doesn't move in our favor, we just get right back out and wait for another setup, another trigger, another recurring price pattern, another arrow from an indicator, whatever's going to help us make our trading decisions to get in or out of the market and try and make a little money. That's what we do. Then we set our goals and our risk ratios, how much we're willing to risk throughout the day and how much we're willing to risk per trade, how many trades we're willing to take. And we do our risk and money management. And so we don't want to risk a whole lot of money. We don't want to take it. You know, we don't want to take a big loss on the day. So if we take two or three losers, generally for me, it's like I call it the three strikes you're out game. If we take three strikes <clears throat> and we lose on all three strikes, we have to stop and come back maybe an hour or two later or even maybe stop for the day. And so that's, you know, depending on what the market's doing. Right now, it's just kind of bouncing around. It's not doing a whole lot. We're anticipating the, maybe the possibility of a continuation of the downtrend. So that's why I put a, a short position in there. But you can see it's not doing anything. It's just kind of sitting there. It's not going for us. It's not moving. There it goes a little bit. But now it comes right back against us. So it's not really trending right now. So we'll have to just kind of sit on our hands and wait and watch and see what it wants to do. But we are short the, the Dow right now. We can bring it up and make it a little bit bigger for you so you can see it a little bit better. So we'll come in here and zoom this in a little bit just like that. So you can see where my stop is. I got my stop just kind of one price bar back. And I can tell that stop right in there. I can tell it to how, to, how I want it to act. I can come in here and say edit the order. And I can come in and I can say I want you to trail on the ATR, which is that yellow dot right there, or I can tell it to trail price bars back. And I say, just trail one price bar back. Hit like that, and then it'll trail down there one price bar back as the market moves in our favor. You can see we're up $100 right now. Just with one contract, that's a $750 investment. So if that market will continue to move in our favor, we'll just continue to hold on to it. We could scalp if we wanted to. We can say, well, we've hit where we, you know, a target area, an area of resistance or an area of support that we could look at that little chart up in the upper right hand corner if it starts to get weak we can just take our money off or you can say well i'm going to go for a longer trend and see if the market's not going to fall all the way down to the vwap which is that little blue line down there that's oftentimes a target area that the market likes to go to we call it a rubber band it kind of or kind of like a little magnet it pulls the market to it so we might look for the market to come there but if you start to get nervous and you say hey it's starting to come back against me i don't want to lose the money i have you can move that auto trailing stop and you just slide it down in there and say, well, if it comes back right there, I'm going to get out. But if it continues to fall, I'll stay in. So there's different games you can play. This is a drag and drop trading platform. It's called track and trade. It's the, use, it's the software I use and it makes it visual. It's a visual representation of where your orders are and you can come in and drag and drop your orders on the screen and just move them around. So this is my stop order. So to change my stop order, I don't have to sit there and hit control key combinations or I don't have to do any order entry stuff. I can just drag it and move it. So that's how I move my stops. I can drag, drag them closer, drag them further away. And so this is how you can see that you can talk, lock in, lock in uh, profits. So there we just made a couple hundred bucks uh, as that market came off that little break right there. We were looking for it to come down a little bit farther and it started to back off. We didn't have to be quite so aggressive with our stop. We could always get back in, right? We could get back in if we think it's going to continue, but we'll look for a little pullback and then maybe a little ABC pattern. That's what I like to trade. I like to trade little ABC patterns, little patterns that come down, make a little pullback. Maybe the bar will go green, one or two green bars, and then turn the first red candle to make a new low. Indicates to me that the market should fall once again, and I'll kind of trade those. So that's what I like to do. You can do whatever you want to do, but that's kind of how I like to trade. I like to trade little ABC patterns. They're my favorite. And so that's, uh, I've got kind of a little cheat sheet up here for you, which um, you can see this kind of tells you a little bit about some of the, let's get this window up here and I can show you some of the patterns. So some of the patterns I like to use are in this little cheat sheet. And I'm going to get this, I'm going to make this available to you. Some of you have, I've, I've got it posted out on the web, but uh, <clears throat> off the top of my head, I can't remember what the link is. So come back tomorrow. I promise I will set this up and give you this for free tomorrow. So that'll get you to come back. Come back and get this free gift. Uh, it is a, a little cheat sheet that I use to help me know which patterns I want to trade and what the strategies are. All right. So I've created this for you. And uh, it's a good, helpful strategy sheet just to kind of help you identify what some of the patterns are that we trade when we're trading these markets. We have some pretty sophisticated ones like the King Tut and the Christmas tree and Balaam's Ladder. And some of you guys have seen some of these before. Like I say, for those of you who have been here, you probably have this. 
and uh, got some real actual examples in here of some of the things to do and trade and how we set them up. Uh, so that's kind of kind of a neat little cheat sheet for you that I'll I'll make available. If you come back tomorrow, I'll, I'll have the URL. Now look at that market. See, we kind of got out a little bit quick because I was showing you an example of how we could move those stops down. We didn't let it trail. Cut your loser short. Let your winners run. We were in a winning situation. We said the market probably come down to that blue line. And it never did make higher, low, higher, higher highs. So we could have just stayed in one price bar back the whole way down. And we'd be up quite significantly more than what we uh, what we got out at. So that's the situation. That's how we trade. And that's how we make money here. And then what I like to do is make money here in the futures market. And then take that money and take it over to the over to the stock market and buy options with it. And so that's what out on the little marquee, out on the little... <clears throat> thumbnail this morning i said we were going to do i said we were going to take our money from our day trading and go over and look at some parabolic stocks i was going to show you how to find those we've been doing that for the last couple of days but we got some new people so i'll show you how i like to find the parabolic stocks that we buy options on and we'll go over and see if we can't find some options to trade you can see i'm up 390 dollars right now but that's because i did a little trading last night i turned on the autopilot the autopilot is a tool that can just you turn it on and it it just trades for you automatically based on your settings. And it made it made a couple hundred bucks last night just from uh, the market that was moving. I just wanted to try try some some settings. Now, we are in the demo account. There's no, no hiding that. It says right there in the top left-hand corner, it says demo. And in the bottom right-hand corner, it says demo. So this is an education course. I am a teacher at the university. This is the lab for our university class. And we are learning how to trade. And so when we learn, we practice in a demo account. And we practice all kinds of doing all kinds of fun things. And we try different things. That's what your demo account's for. It's designed for you to trade and try all your different strategies to get comfortable with the software and to learn how to trade and to practice, practice, practice. Because nothing makes you a better trader than practice. And so we practice in the demo account. And then the only time we ever go into our real money account and trade is when we're confident with a specific strategy that we might have perfected. So, for example, if you're looking at your uh, your spreadsheets over here or your your cheat sheet over here and you're like, hey, I'm really good at this um, bearish flat top ninja or, hey, I see these flat bottom girls all the time. And, man, when I, when I see one of those, that's when I'm going to really buy because I know that that's good. And I've done a lot of those and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm comfortable with that one. So that's the only thing I'm going to trade. Or you might come in here like me where I like to say, hey, you know what? I like these ABC patterns. When I see these patterns, this is what I want to see. All right, this is what I want to trade, and so I'm gonna, I'm gonna trade these ABC patterns like this, these little explosive patterns, and so that's the little rally, the little pullback, and the rally. This is the one we just traded, the little drop, and then we're looking for that little pullback. Remember, I said we're looking for a couple green bars, then we would look for a continuation or a drop of the trend. So once you get good at this one, and you're like, hey, that's what I'm gonna trade. You don't have to learn how to trade them all. You don't have to trade all of these. You know, the longer, ex more experience you have and the better you become at trading, you can have all these patterns and you can trade all of them. <clears throat> but you don't have to trade all the patterns. You can just trade, just pick one. That's all. You know, just pick one pattern and then trade that one pattern. And when you find that one pattern, you go over it and you put it in your live money trade and you take two or three trades and three strikes you're out. If you get three losers in a row, it doesn't mean that the pattern doesn't work just means that the market's not playing in your pattern today. And so you need to stop and walk away and come back at a later time or even maybe a later day. So that's how this, uh, this trading stuff works. All right. So now we're using that area right there. That blue line has become support. If it breaks through, it can definitely, you know, continue down and it can go past it. But usually what happens when it comes to the VWAP, it'll wander around a little bit and then it'll decide which direction it wants to go. Or sometimes it'll come down, uh, like here in the morning, it might just come down, use it as support, and turn around and go right back up. So you can take that into consideration. But we don't like to try, I, me personally, I'm not telling you what anybody else likes to do other than myself. This is just what I like to do. I don't like to take the first break high in here. So this thing will come down. It'll bounce off that blue line, probably come up and give us a few uh, green bars, and then it might turn and fall once again and give us that A, B, C, D pattern, right, that we were looking at in the cheat sheet. And so now as it comes down, that thing uh, might turn and, and, and start to fall. Now, a, an advanced strategy would be say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm confident that it's going to fall. And so it's up here breaking these um, this yellow line right here. And we see a lot of times where it'll come back, break that line, and turn and fall once again. And so an advanced strategy would be to take a short position right here. 
and try and catch that little pullback as we anticipate a continuation of the downtrend. But we're sitting here right at the VWAP. This is oftentimes an area of support, and this market will turn and start to rally. So we'll watch for it to turn and rally. If it'll give us two or three bars, we might then get a couple of red bars back this way and then another return. So there's that strategy that it could do on the way back up, right? So we have to be mindful of one or the other. And what we're going to look for is we're going to look for higher highs and higher lows and lower highs and lower lows based on the individual uh, price bars. Now, we also look for higher highs and higher lows and lower highs and lower lows on the overall longer term trend as well. So we have a high up here. We have a low down here. So that means we're in a downtrend, right? So what is this going to do right here? This becomes what we call a decision point. And if it breaks that green right there, there you go. There's a sell signal. So we take that right off that first candle to break a new low off that green bar. If it was going to go up, we wouldn't have expected it to break that low right there because that's now making lower highs and lower lows on the individual bars while we're making lower highs and lower lows on the overall longer term trend. So it goes both ways, just looking at the individual price bars for higher highs and higher lows, lower highs and lower lows. And it also goes on the longer term trend, making higher highs and higher lows and looking for the overall move in the market. So that's kind of what we're doing here, just anticipating higher highs and higher lows. And if it doesn't do it and it just kind of starts wandering sideways, well, it doesn't mean your system doesn't work. It just means the market's not performing as we would like it to do. This is all about probabilities. Okay, so every trade is a probability. The probability is that we're going to see it continue to fall. If it doesn't, it doesn't mean you have to, oh, suddenly I have to go out and learn a new system. No, it just means that the system didn't work this time. Okay. <clears throat> so we have, you know, we have um, the probabilities that we're playing. I think I have a little table down here on probabilities. Let me see if I can find it. Is it in this cheat sheet, guys? Uh, somewhere. Those of you who have it. Don't we have a probabilities table? I think we do. Let's see if I can find it. I thought it was right here. There we go. I think that's it. So this is our little probabilities table. Let's 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 drop our stop in here just in case it wants to come back against us while we're talking about probabilities and we don't want to lose money. So we'll put our stop at break even. If it continues to fall, great, wonderful. We'll make more money. If it comes back and stops us out, well, we'll wait for another setup and we'll try it again. But here I can show you, this is the power of consistency. So if we were able to make just $50 a day, that's $12,500 a year. If we could average $100 a day, that's $25,000. And I'm not talking about 365 days. We're talking about trading days. So that's 250 days in a year. So there's 250 trading days in a year. And if you could just come in here and make $100 a day, that would be $25,000 a year. Now that could be life-changing for many people. All right. Some people have unrealistic expectations and they think they're going to come in here and, oh, I've been trading, uh, you know, I've been day trading for, you know, two weeks now. I, I should be making $4,000 a day or a million dollars per year. Well, it's probably not realistic that you as a trader who's, you know, just started is going to be making $4,000 a day. Not that it can't, certainly can. There's a lot of money to be made in these markets if you're good at it. But if we come back here and have some more realistic expectations, let's say $100 a day, you could make $25,000 a year just making $100 a day. And we're up $155 right now on this one trade. So that one trade where we're sitting right now is $135. If we just got out right now, we'd be following the little idea of $100 a day, make $25,000 a year and be done. And then we take that money. I like to take my profits over and put them in the stock market and buy options with them, try and, you know, make that money grow even faster and bigger and build up my retirement. But look at this. If we could just make $200 a day. Now we're up. That market's backing off on us a little bit right now. It's not falling like like it was, but it's 85, 75. Let's see if it won't continue down. But if you just made $200 a day and we're up, you can see right now we're up 390 closed profit and $100 open profit. We're up $490 right now. If we just took it off, we'd have very close to $500 already today. And if we had made $500 in a day, that's $125,000 a year. So don't come in and think that you have to make $4,000, $2,000, $1,000 a day to be successful at this. I mean, $50 a day, that's $12,500. And if you're just doing it for an hour a day, that could be a significant part-time and part-time income, $12,000 a day. Again, could be, you know, that could be, heck, that could be life-changing for a lot of people. 
It's okay. We just got stopped out. So it didn't continue to fall like we would like to have had it do. So we're only up $395. And our little table in here says if we made 300, well, 250, $250 a day, that's $62,500 a year. So my goal when I'm trading, I like to think of as $500 a day because I want to make 125000 a year trading. So my goal is to make $500 a day. Right now I'm sitting at $395. Okay. So I've made $395 today. Haven't quite hit my goal of $500 or on average $125,000 a year. And that's kind of how I like to trade. So don't have unrealistic expectations. Does it mean you can't go up and make $1,000 a day, $2,000 a day, $4,000 a day? No, certainly can. If the, if the market's right and if it's, you know, trending and you got the patience to do it, then you can make bigger money. So some days you're going to have, some days you're going to make, you know, $10 <laughs> and some days you're going to make $2,000 and maybe even that $4,000. But on average, what you're trying to do is just trying to average maybe $500 a day, make a good living at this, right? <clears throat> and then we take our money. Like I say, I like to take my money and take it over to the over to the uh, stock market. Now I want to show you this next little table. This little table in here, this is your risk versus reward ratio. All right, so this is over 80% of traders fail within the first year. The key difference between success and failure often lies in the ability to predict markets. But is but in the, how did I read that? The key difference between success and failure often lies not in the ability to predict markets, but in the mastery of risk management. All right, risk management is more important than market predictability. At its core, the one to two risk versus reward ratio means that for every dollar risk, the potential reward is $2. If you can work off of that simple strategy of risk $1 to make $2, a simple yet powerful principle forming a sound trading strategy. They also fail because they give up at the first sign of failure. All right. So now I want to talk to you a little bit about failure. Take a look at this. If your winning rate is 30%, you have the number of wins is 30. The number of losses is 70. Your profit is 6000 and your loss is 7000 That means you lost $1,000. All right. But if you have a winning rate of 40%, this means you lose six out of every 10 trades. The number of wins would be 40. The number of losses would be 60. The profit would be $8,000. The loss from your loss would be $6,000. You would still make $2,000. So you can still, if you'll use a, a simple risk reward ratio of one to two, you can still lose 60% of the time and still have a profitable trading strategy. Our goal is to get up into the 50 to maybe even 60. Some of the really good traders can get up into 70. But think about just trying to be 50% right, which means for every two trades you take, you're wrong with one of them, right? You're only right 50% of the time. If you can be right 50% of the time and you work off of a one to two risk versus reward ratio, you can make 10,000, lose 5,000 and still have a profitable trading strategy of $5,000. So the risk management is every bit as important as being able to pick the direction of the market. All right. So just to keep that in mind, uh, just, just keep in mind that you're, you're working off of probabilities. All right. And when you have a trading strategy or you have a, a trading pattern that you like and you're real comfortable with that trading pattern, like for me, again, I, my favorite trading pattern is the, is the uh, ABC pattern like this, this little ABC pattern. So that's my favorite pattern. And I can get up into the 60, 70 percentile if I just trade this one pattern. If I just wait for this one, I can generally hit, you know, 50, 60, 70 percent sometimes over a period of 10 to 15, 20 trades. So if I'll wait for 20 of these, I can generally beat 50 percent. And if I can beat 50 percent with a one to two risk versus reward ratio, I have a highly profitable trading strategy. All right. <clears throat> so that's kind of how I like to trade. So that's kind of pretty much what we stick to and try to teach in this class. And so we use these indicators. This is the ATR. That's all it is. It's the average true range of the market. And it's calculated, you can see, with a one-to-one -one risk factor. Now, I'll oftentimes, you know, tighten that down depending on how tight the market is. That's my trailing stop. So my trailing stop can anywhere from one price bar back, which is behind each one of these flat tops, or each one of these flat bottoms, or I can tighten this down a little bit and you can see I can bring it further away or I can bring it closer and I'll trail my stop on those yellow dots. Now, you might ask, which is the best setting? Well, it's not that 
it's one setting is over and better than the other is because you use it and change it based on the movement of the market. Is the market moving quite aggressively? You might want a tighter stop. If you want it further back, it's a little bit further stop. So, for example, I could come in here and I could buy off this market, right, in anticipation of a continuation of the uptrend, and I drop my stop in, and I could put it on, and I just can, in track and trade, I can just drop it down here anyway, anywhere, hit edit, come in here, and I can tell it to, to trail on those yellow dots. And the way I do that is just say trail on the ATR, stop, hit OK, and then it's going to trail based on the settings I use for the ATR, and it's going to adjust my stop. So if I bring my stop further away, it's not going to go backwards. It'll stay where it's at. But if I bring it closer, it'll start to move with each new price bar to where I put those dots. So I got really tight dots. It's going to move my stop to that next dot with the next new price bar. And it's going to start trailing on these little real tight stops. So I can adjust my stops where I want them to be and how tight I want them to be as I'm in the trade if I want to. So see how those dots are where the, the, the trailing stop would be? So I can trail further back, give it more room to grow. I can move it forward, and I can do that while I'm in the trade. Now, it's not going to move the stop backwards. It'll never move backwards. It'll only move forwards. But if I move it tighter in, it'll bring it up closer. If I hold it back a little bit, I say, oh, I want to hold my stop back a little bit. I can run that up, and the stop will stay back here a little bit. See, now I put that stop way up there, so it jumped way up there close. And now I've moved my stop back. So it'll sit there and wait until the yellow dots catch up. Then it'll start moving again. So you can see how I can move my stop up and down. Right now, we'll put it right here. It's really tight. I put it at four, and that's when it jumped. <laughs> so that's a pretty tight stop. So we'll hold it back here just a little bit. It's in the, it's, 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 um, we're in the money right now. Let's see what, how much we're making. We're up $275 right now as this market starts to move forward. We're coming up to this 50-period uh, moving average, which is going to act as an area of resistance. All right, so as it comes across there, it's got to break through that area of resistance, that 50-period moving average. So what's happened, sometimes it backs off at that point, so we might want to move our stop. You're going to say, hey, I'm moving this thing. Do you want to move it yourself? I say yes. Now I can manage it myself. I can pull it a little tighter just in case it breaks like it did last time, right? We can lock in a little profit. If it doesn't break that 50 period moving average, I'd expect it to kind of back off off of that thing. And then it would stop us out and we'd take our profits. But if it breaks through it, then our stop will just sit there. And if it breaks through that 50 period moving average, which is an area of resistance, then we'll let it go. And there it's pushing higher. You can see we're up $290 right now with $395 in closed profit. So there, right there, we've hit our goal of over $500 for the day. And that's really all we had to do to get over $500. Now it's given us more than 500. So we can take it if we want, but if our goal is 500, we could scoot that stop up in just a little bit closer, just in case it does pop back right now and lock that profit in. And is it going to get us out or is it going to continue up? Oh, it got us out. We got $650 on the day. I think that's pretty good. So I think at this point, since we've met our goal of $500 and we actually went over because the market gave us more, we don't get out just because we made 500, let the trade finish out because it might give you more than 500. So it gave us $650. And so if we come down and we look at our little table once again, if I can find it down in here, that little table. All right, so there's our little table, $650, we're up, we're over 500, so that's $125,000 a year if we could do just what we did today, just what you've watched me do today, made a little over $500, that'd be $125,000 a year. Now, we don't have to make that $500 every day. Don't feel pressured to do it. Some days it's going to, the market's going to be trending and it's going to give you more money. Some days it's not. It's going to not be trending. It's not going to give you the money that you're looking for. Now, we're hitting a resistance point here. Notice that we're getting red bars right there. First red candle to make a new low. If you wanted to, you could take a short position right there in anticipation that the market's going to continue in this A, B, C, D pattern, right? Because overall longer term trend, it's making a downtrend. So this is your A, your high, your low, your pullback, hit the 50% moving average. If you drew your Fibonacci ruler in there, for those of you who are Fibonacci aficionados, you'd see that that came right back to the 61.8% level on that Fibonacci ruler. 
and now it's turning and it's dropping once again. So this is the A, B, C, D pattern that I like to look for. Now we want to see it come back down, test that previous low right there and continue and to push past it the same distance as what it went from here to here. So now we'll look for it to go from here to here. And that would be the reflection of the distance from here down to here. All right, and that's what that Fibonacci projection tool is telling you, that we should see that market break this low and continue to fall. So that's your A, B, C, D pattern on the longer term trends, and then your A, B, C, or higher highs and lower highs on the individual price bars. All right, so that's how you trade. So we're up $650. Let's go over to the stock market now. And before we do that, let's come in and say hi to a few people. Let's see who's in here. we got a nice little crowd. So we got Kirk Schwartz in here saying hello. we got Lowdown Killer. Nice to see you in here this morning. we got Michael Bruce. A good old stalwart likes to be here every day. We got Brian Johnson. Good to see you, Brian. And Brian's one of our students at the Utah Tech University. So glad to have you guys in class saying hi. We got a lot more people in the class than what's saying hi. If you guys want to put up your little marquees and say hello, I'll make you famous. All right. As the market's coming down, you can see it's breaking below. First red candle to break a new low. We also got a break of the parabolic SAR, the way we had it set for our stops. That's what that yellow arrow is. It's just telling you that the market broke through the yellow yellow dots on this bar and then it's continuing down again we got the we got that blue line right there which is an area of support so if it could it could come down and hesitate right here and kind of bounce around a little bit be mindful of that you might get a little pullback before it drops once again markets don't always go straight up and straight down now i am using kind of a unique price bar this price bar right here is called a hike and ashy bar and then we're turning that on on the one minute chart hike and ashy on a one minute chart and you can see right up in here in my button bar, I've got this little button I've added to track and trade. It's If you want to do that yourself and you don't see it, right-click on the handle of that little toolbar and then hit Customize the Toolbar. Brings up this cool little pay, this little window here, and all the tools are on the left-hand side. And you can add them to your toolbar up here on the right-hand side. You just hit Add and Remove, and then you can move them up and down in the list and put them wherever you want. I added this one here called Hike and Ashy. So if you click on it, it turns your price into Hike and Ashy. If you click on it again, it turns it back off. So this is a normal one minute chart. This is what most traders will look at. And this is what most traders will see. If you turn on the Hike and Ashy, it mathematically smooths those those tools and helps you with your trailing stops a little bit better. And that's really what it's designed for is to kind of help you have a smoother market so you can trail your stops a little bit easier and know where to put them. Sometimes the market gets a little choppy in here with all these bottoming tails. And if you have your don't have your high Kanashi on, you might get stopped out where otherwise you might not. So that's kind of what that's for. It just kind of helps you see a little bit smoother smoother trend in the market. It's kind of putting a mathematical model or putting an indicator into the price bars. And that's kind of cool. And that's a neat little tool. Uh, Hike and Ashi is made, designed by a Japanese guy. And so that's what it does. It's kind of a neat little tool. Look at the drop off there. See, and we even said, hey, if we take it the first red candle to break a new low on this trend right here, let's look at what we could be up right now. How much is that? That's an additional to if we'd have got in just on the cross of that yellow dot to where it's currently trading. That's another $380 right there. So this market's moving nicely. It's making nice moves, but we're done. We've made our $650, and we're going to go over to the stock market. All right. So the stock market is over here. And let's see. We're going to let's delete this one, and we'll bring it back, see if it'll come back for us. Cue it up. Why that's loading, we'll come in here and we'll look at Cisco. Actually, where I want to go is I want to show you how I find these stocks. These are stocks we traded yesterday. This is Mags. We bought a put option on Mags because Mags is, um, and we got High Kanashi on here. We got that turned on. You can see Mags is the magnificent seven. That's the seven largest stocks. Oh, you can't see the, the profit and loss over here. Let me move me out of the way. How do I get myself out of the way so you guys can see everything that we want you to see? I gotta put me somewhere there. How about that? That way you can't see the stock though. From here, you can't see the profit and loss. If you're here, you can't see the name of the stock. I can go up there, but then you can't see the accounting window. They don't let me put me up in the left hand corner. I don't know why. I don't know. Let's see what that one does. That one gets rid of me altogether. We could do that one for a minute. That one you can see that we got the the stocks and the ones that we've traded, we started trading the other day. So what about that one? Well, that's the same thing as this one. 
We got this one. That's no good. Don't need to see my big face. How about that one? Nor that one. That's no good either. Okay, well, we'll deal with that for what we got for now. All right, so we're looking at mags, all right? And we're down $87 because the market did rally after we bought our put option, but we're anticipating a blow-off here on these high-tech stocks, and it did that the last couple of days. It's still coming down. This is Piedmont Lithium. This is another one that we got in yesterday. Uh, my software is being really slow today. What the heck is going on? I'm going to try and free up some internet. I think I got, I'm going to take this one off. We're not using this one anymore. We'll want to come back to it. Look how smooth it came right back down to that blue line. Look at that. Let's turn this one off. I, sometimes I just don't have enough bandwidth to run everything I want to run. Projecting over YouTube, running multiple platforms, running internet websites. Sometimes I, maybe I need a faster internet connection. I think I'll go look into that after class. See if we can't get some faster internet in here. All right. How are we doing? There, that's a little better. There's Apple's five-minute chart. So Apple's starting to rally a little bit down here. You can see we got some longer-term moving averages in here. We talked about these yesterday. We got the 100 is the blue, 100 moving average. We got the 200 moving average, which is the that uh, what a color is that orange and then we've got the red is the 50 moving average and then we got the 28 is the green moving average so we got a few moving averages in here we just kind of like to look at those as if they're areas of resistance as the market comes up look for them to bounce off those areas if they break through we look for them to go to the next one um so the market kind of what is this a five minute chart so this was the opening bell and the market went sideways for the first little bit. And then this is a pre-market session, 7.30. There was, okay, so right out of the opening bell, 7.30 my time, 9.30, 9.30 Eastern, Apple just started to rally. Now, we've got a, we got a long call on Apple, so we want the market to go up. Now, we were up a lot more. We were up over $1,000 on Apple at one point. It kind of pulled back. Now we're looking for it to continue its rally. Get rid of all these arrows. Get rid of all the drawing tools, man. Let's just look at how we got start over. So we got a rally pullback. Apple got some bad news, and now we need it to rally once again. And the whole market is kind of down. If we come and look at the S&P 500, let's look at the S&P. It's dropping again big hard today. So that's our 15-minute chart on the S&P 500. And we're making money because we bought a put option. Put option, of course, means that you anticipate the market's going to fall and you make money when the market goes down. So our put option that we bought on the S&P 500 right as it rolled over that peak, that so we're up $3,400. Give me one second. I got to drink some tea. All right, so lots of stuff going on here. Let's go see what Tesla's doing. Tesla's falling out of bed. Um, Mags, we looked at that one. Intel was one we looked at yesterday. So it's, my goodness, my internet is not very happy today. There we go. Oh, look at Intel, dropped like a rock. That's the daily chart of Intel. It just keeps cascading down. Look at that thing. Ford Motor Company dropping out, dropping out of bed, coming back down, testing these areas of support. I'd like to see Ford come down and test at Fibonacci 61.8. I don't know what the heck is going on. I can't get anything going on. My, my internet is so slow today. So that's coming down here. We're looking for it to come down to the 61.8, and then we'll look for it to rebound. That will be buyers down here if we can get it down into that low region. Doesn't mean it can't come down lower. It certainly can, but that would be a nice place to start loading up on some Ford. Let's go look over. Let's go look over at Finviz. Finviz 
I'm just going to go to the home page. For those of you who are not aware, this is Finviz. I have an account with these guys. I'm not associated with them anyway. So if you went and bought Finviz, I wouldn't make any money. That's not what I'm here doing. I'm not advertising this company. I just like them. So we come in here and Finviz has this little, this little, this little box down here. This little box is called a heat map. All right. So if you click on it, it pulls up the heat map and it tells you what's green. Oh, look, NVIDIA is up 1.83% today. UNH is up 5.89%. Microsoft's up. So all the green ones are up. All the red ones are down, right? And you can come in and you can look at one day performance. You can look at the full heat map. You can look at just the S&P 500. Um, all kinds of stuff you can look at in here. All right. But that's not my favorite heat map. My favorite heat map is this one here, this little bubble heat map. So I come in here and I love this one because it has kind of a a view that tells you whether things are percolating up or percolating down, right? And so zero is right in the middle, right here. You can see zero. And as you go across the line, you can see which markets are up. Now, I want to set this not to market capitalization. I want to set it to volume. So if I set it to volume, the big circles are the ones that everybody's trading. So you can see a UNH. United Health. Now that's a big market. It's rallied big today, but it's a four hundred and seventy-two dollar stock. This one here is MS Morgan Stanley. It's a ninety dollar stock, and it's the second biggest one. So let's go look at Morgan Stanley. So we're going to pull up Track and Trade. We're going to go over Morgan Stanley, and this is how I find markets that are in an explosive mode. If I could get some internet going, why can't I get any internet going? So slow today. So that's Morgan Stanley, and you can see it's rallied today off this pullback. So it pulled back. This, this might just be an ABC pattern, right? Come down, get a little pullback, and then continue the next leg down. But we're not really interested in what it's going to do over the long haul today. We're just interested in what it's doing today. So we're going to come down. If I can get my internet to work, I'm going to bring it down to the two-minute chart. There, it's loading. And we're going to come in and we're going to look at our options chain, our calls. Slowest, the lowest one we get is three days. So we're going to go to three days. And look, I can buy a three-day option on this thing for 117 bucks, And this market looks like it wants to rally today. So we could come in and we could say buy. It's crossing over those blue lines, those blue dots. 172, 117. We'll buy one in the money. That's a delta of 62. Let's get that baby on there. Let's do three or four of them because we can do $500, right? We made $500 today. There's, uh, uh, we can do, we made $500. There's 519. Go ahead and say market order and we're going to market into that. Okay, we have our long call on Morgan Stanley as it starts to come up here and tries to break these blue lights. And it's the one that's rallying today. So a lot of people are looking at it. So maybe that'll push higher and that's our goal. So that's what we do. We want to come and find the markets that already have a lot of people looking at them and are saying that they're rallying. So we don't want to go and go long on Bank of America because, hey, it's going down today. But we might want to buy a put option on it. What about this one? This is Tesla's dropping out of the dropping out of bed, too. And a lot of people are trading Tesla today. So we could go look at Tesla. And I think we've already got Tesla open, right? Didn't we already look at it? There's Tesla. If we wanted to, we could buy a put option on Tesla. But I want to make sure that we're getting a Getting a, we're getting a pattern, a little pattern here like this. And it looks like it wants to turn around with this little wedge pattern. So it breaks out the top. It could rally and come back up. So we don't want to be going short yet. We want to wait for it to see if it's going to fail and then go short down here. But it looks like more people are pushing Tesla short, right? It's down a little bit today. We could look at Bank of America. It's down quite bad. BAC. Let's go BAC here. BAC. Come on, Internet. Bring me some data. Boy, it's being slow today. What in the heck is wrong? I don't know what to do to try and speed it up. I got a bunch of websites open over here, but they shouldn't be. They should be all static. They shouldn't be doing it. Why is this thing so slow today? This is unusual. Very unusual. Very, very unusual. Why can't I get anything to come through today? My girlfriend's probably downstairs watching a movie. <laughs> Taking all my bandwidth. 
going to have to call them and find out if I can get more bandwidth. That's not right. This is something that's wrong. I don't want to restart my computer and go restart the modem because then I'd lose all you guys. Uh, technical difficulties. Well, I can't open my stocks. Let's hit it again. There it goes. I sent a text to my girlfriend. I said, are you watching a movie down there on my internet? She said, no. So can't blame her. Okay, let's come in here and look at the two-minute chart. You see that Bank of Utah? That was really dropping. So we had that nice big move up right here. Broke those blue lights, and down that thing's flushing. What's next on the line? 100 period moving average is right here, and then we got 200 down here. So these are some areas of support. If we come in with our Fibonacci ruler all the way from here to here, you can see that that Fibonacci ruler is Fibonacci sweet spot is looking down here. 61.8 is looming. That would be all the way down to there. So let's come and look on a two-minute chart. There, that thing's still dropping. So what I want to see on this, I would like to see a little pullback and then a continuation. I want to see the little A, B, C pattern, right? But that's no fun, sitting there waiting for that. So let's come in here, and we'll put one on anyway. So we got three days. This is how we would take advantage of this if we thought this market was going to continue to fall. We come in, we're going to search for three-day options down here. This is the options chain. You can see that we can buy one three days for $52. That's all it's going to cost us to get into this thing. You're running a delta of 0 0.50. Remember, each option represents 100 shares. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to buy. Oh, that's a call option. I don't want that one. I want a put option because we're looking to make money as the market falls. So we're going to say buy a put option. That one's $42. So it's kind of already down. We kind of look for, need a kind of a little pullback, but we'll do it anyway right now. We'll just do a single, all right, just to see what happens. But it's only $42. You could, you know, if you got a couple hundred bucks, you could put a couple hundred dollars in there. So there's $200. That would be five of them would be $200. So let's just go back to three because we're kind of down here at the bottom. This thing's already extended. doesn't mean it can't fall further, but it is kind of getting down here to where we need a little pullback first. So we'll just come in here just to show you how to do this. We could market into it. We've got a spread of $3. We're going to pay that. And see if it's going to take our order. Nope. Let's edit it. Let's put it right on. They're asking. That's 47. So we might have to go down to 47 to get it to take it. Well, it's sitting at 47, 47, 48. That's not good. 47. 40. Oh, it's not getting. What the heck is wrong? See if we can't get it to open up. Come on. It might be the internet thing problem again. Well, I'm not getting failed on that order either. I got to reset my computer, get a faster internet, something. I'm not, some reason I'm getting shut down here. I can't get any, look at that. It won't even give me, I'm having technical problems, guys. I don't know what the heck is wrong. Buy my put. Come on, we'll try again. Buy three of them. 46. 45, 46. 47. They're asking 48. There we go. Okay, we got filled. All right, we're filled to the short side. Not real happy about what's going to happen here. We'll see if it'll continue to fall. This is a two-minute chart. I'm looking for kind of a rebound in here and then a fall like that. See it break those blue lights. But we'll see if it'll continue to fall. We put in there, we bought three of them at $48. So you can see over here on our positions with our chart, Three of them at $48. Our current value cost basis was $147. Current value at $145. The spread was, I think when we got in, the spread was like $5. So now it's $1.50. So it's actually moved in our favor. Oh, now the total gain is, we're down $3. 
All right, so that's that one. So what was the other one we had? Morgan Stanley. So Morgan Stanley, we bought the call, and it's rallying. This is one that's we need to go long. So Morgan Stanley, oh, it says we're up a dollar fifty. All right, so we're up a dollar fifty on Morgan Stanley. Now, are we going to keep these overnight? You could. We've kept some of these overnight, right? Like PLL, we're up five hundred and fifty dollars on that one, and we kept that one overnight, and it fell off that that rally. We bought a put option. Uh, as this thing closed. Now, what we did is we did that on the close of business yesterday. I think our win, yeah, we bought that put option in anticipation of a fall in price and it blew back off. A lot of these are what we call pump and dumps, right? Where the market will come in. If you come in to um, hit any on our list, it'll show you all the pump and dumps. Now, there's a pump and dump. Look at that baby right there. 21 cent penny stock that went through the moon. It's up almost 80% today. So a lot of guys like to trade those. And you can't trade options on them. You have to buy shares, 21 cents. But that, see how big that circle is? Here's another one, Wiza. This is what everybody's watching. Everybody's watching these, but they're watching that one right there. That's their favorite, 21 cent, J-A-G-X. Now, sometimes these don't come up because they're penny stocks, J-A-G-X. And you can't get them. Oh, that one's in here. So look at that baby go. So we're going to bring it in. Let's see if it'll open up a one-minute chart. There's a one-minute chart. Let's open up a two-minute chart. So this is called a pump and dump, all right? And so what you do is you come in, you look for these pump and dumps in the morning off of that little scanner, and then that's the one everybody's watching, and that's why that thing's going to the moon. So you can see on a percent basis, that thing's up 64% from that yellow to that red arrow right there from yellow to green. And that's the bulls and bears indicator telling you that's the Fibonacci sequence. So we can turn off that just to see the color coding that we're used to. Let's see, remove. So there's your, your red to green. There's another red to green, red to green. And you kind of want to trade while the these are your long positions, right? Don't take long positions when the MACD is red. Only take long positions when the MACD is green. So MACD is red. Don't take long positions. goes from red to green. Take your long positions only when the MACD is green, and then you can trade like that. So whenever you get a little pullback, lower high, and the MACD is green, that's probably a little buy signal right in there. You could take that little buy signal. Let's try to make this a little bigger so you can see it. And that's just kind of a little guide. It's not set in stone, but it's a it's a pretty good little rule. So there's another one right there. So you got a little pullback in here. These are called pennants, right? Little pennant formations. That's what we call those. So there's little pullbacks like that. There's pennant formations like this. Now remember, we generally get well three of those or two two pennants and three drives. So here's Drive one, here's drive two, we're going into drive three. Now this thing's going parabolic. That's what we call that, parabolic. All right, so that's why out on the little marquee, I was trying to show you how you can trade options on parabolic stocks. Unfortunately, this is not a one that we can trade options on, I don't think. Let's go look. My bet is no. Nope, see, no options. Because it's a 25-cent stock. They're not going to have options on a 25-cent stock. Oh, man, look at this. We lost our internet again. What the heck is going on? Wait for the program to respond. Come on, Internet. I got to go and see if I can't talk to the Internet people and get more Internet in here. All right. So this is really going. This is a two-minute chart. Let's go down to a one-minute chart. There's a one-minute chart without high Ashy. There's a one-minute chart with no high Ashy, and this is what most people are looking at right here. This is what they see. Okay, so it's pulling back at the top of the third drive, right? So let's see what it does. Come in here and turn on high Ashy. A little cleaner, if you ask me. I like it. I kind of like the high Ashy move. You can turn that off. This is what everybody else is looking at. No high Ashy. Get rid of some of these drawing tools. These are your moving averages coming up underneath. Now, a lot of people will put on here, and we talked about Ross yesterday. Ross likes to come in here, and he likes to put in a, a nine period moving average. All right. So he'll put in a nine exponential. And if the market comes back and touches that nine exponential, he'll buy again right there. That's that advanced strategy we keep talking about. Right. So you could put a limit order in here and just say, well, if you touch that, I'm going to buy. But we're at the top of the third drive. So I'm not really anxious to get long on this market. So we'll, we'll do it just for fun with one share, one 23 cent share. Maybe, 
maybe we better do more than that. <laughs> Let's do a hundred shares to $23. All right. So we'll put that in right there. I don't think we're going to get much luck out of it, but we'll try it. If it comes back and touches that, that nine period moving average, we'll take a hundred shares long or $23 worth of shares in anticipation of a rally. Now Ross likes to come in another thing he likes to do because he likes to scalp these these pump and dumps. And I'm not a real I don't I'm not a real fan of this type of trading. All right. I'd rather go trade options on something that's got a little bit more uh, motion on it. But just for fun, let's come and look at these things. You can't trade options on them. I know we are here to trade options, but see, and then Ross will come in here and he goes into his preferences on the moving averages. And he says, if a thing hits a 20, I think he uses 20, 20, 21 period moving average. If it hits 21, then he gets back out. That's where his stop would be. So then we come in here and we say trade and we're going to put our stop at right in, right in there. So that's where he put his stop. So that's how he does it. He picks them up right here on the, as the market pulls back, hits the, hits the nine period moving average. And then if it comes all the way down and hits the 21 period moving average, that's where he'd get out, take his lumps, take his black eye. Let's see if this thing's going to go up and make a fourth drive. This thing's going parabolic, so it could. It could. It could. It's the big one. It's the one everybody's watching. It's this big red ball right here, okay, on the entire stock market. So we're looking at the entire stock market here, 23 cents stock. Oh, here it's coming down. See, I didn't think it was going to go back up, not with a, not with the third drive. So we might lose $1.30 here, $1.50. Ross would be out by now. He wouldn't let it. If it goes up, starts to go up, and then it comes back down like that, he just gets out. He doesn't wait for it to come down. He just stop. Usually. Sometimes he does. We'll see. It's only a dollar. <laughs> but we're at the top of the third drive. We know better. We, we know not to get in there anyway because we've been trained on Fibonacci and Elliott Wave, so we know not to get in on the top of the third drive. That's just not a good place to be getting into the market. And look at the MACD rolled over. It's gone red right now. So... But if you'd have done that right here, if you'd have taken your entry on this nine period moving average right there, that would have been a good entry, right? So your little pullback, two red bars, comes back, hits that nine, and then it took off. You'd have made on here with your with your 100 shares, you'd have made $4.60. Let's see if it's going to go up, bring us back into usually what happens here at the top of a third drive is we get a little pullback, a little rally. We can make that ABC pattern right, and then it drops again. So we'll see. It's going to get us back up into a green zone. So at this point, we're not going to let it take money away from us. Let's say we're in with 10,000 shares. All right, we're going to start being a little bit more aggressive with our stop. Now, remember, to do this type of trading, you have to have $25,000 in your account as a minimum. If you drop one penny below $25,000 and you keep doing it, then they'll lock your account for 90 days. That's how the stock market works. So you can't do this unless you have a minimum of $25,000. If you fall one penny below, you can't trade anymore. All right. That's if you're on a margin account. So if you're on a cash account, you can trade, you can day trade, but you can only day trade the amount of money you've got. And you can only every two days. So if you have $5,000 in there, you can put 5,000 into the market, but as soon as you sell it out, then you can't trade again for two more days. Yeah, that $5,000 has been used up. That's how the stock market does it. Trying to save you from yourself. We don't do that over in the futures market. We don't trade like that. We don't have those rules. Last bastion of true capitalism on earth today over there in the stock market, over there in the futures market. We don't have all those silly lock your account for 90 days because you took a trade. I thought that's what we were supposed to do is take trades. Nope, not in the stock market. Don't take trades. Not unless you have lots of money in there. Oh, okay. Okay.
Come on, baby. Jump up there. Don't stop us out. We don't want to lose our 75 cents. Oh, no. We're going to get stopped out. See, it's going to give you that little ABC pattern off the top. I told you it was going to do that. A, B, C, at the top of the third pattern. That thing's probably going to come down. I mean, it can't turn around and then go back up again? No, it certainly can. It's the one that everybody's watching today. Jaguar Health. Come on, baby. Let's turn on our hike. Oh, we got stopped out. Turn on hike and ashy again. So you take a short position? No, it's not easy to borrow. If it's not easy to borrow, which in track trade, they have a little icon up here in the top right corner that says ETB, easy to borrow. That means you could borrow it. Because remember, in the futures market, you don't have to borrow your shares to go short. You just go short. It's different rules. Over here, you have to borrow shares to go short, and then you have to pay interest on them. So there's different rules for different exchanges, and we have a lot easier rules in the futures market. Okay, look at that thing fall. Just what I said, right? Said we're going to get a little pullback, a little rally, and another little drop. Just like a train on rails. It's following that three drive pattern pretty darn clear, pretty darn clean. All right. So let's go find something else. Let's go see what else is going on over here. What's Wiza? That's the second one in the list, isn't it? Wiza. It's a $2.89 share. W I S A. Lan, I thought you were going to trade options. Okay. Well, let's go look at this one just real real quick for fun. Then we'll go look and see if we can't find some that's got some options on it. W-I-S-A. Oh, my goodness. Look at that ugly market. Got one, one rally bar on it. Let's go look at a two-minute chart and see what it's doing. If we can get it to pull up. There it is. Now, if we turn off Hike and Ashy, what does that chart look like? That's what it looks like. Volumes, not bad. 1.7 million. It's trying to break higher. Trade. Should we come in here and put put a couple hundred bucks on it? Buy the market. Starting to rally off of that. A, B, C pattern right here. So we got A, B, C. It's trying to rally. Go back up. Let's see if it wants to go. How much are we investing? Position, chart, we put cost $755. So this is basically the same amount of money we are putting into the futures market. $755 is about a, the amount that we caught, char, cost for uh, margin over in the futures market, right? So come on, baby. Keep going. We're up $7. Push it higher, guys. Click that buy button. Click that buy button. We need people to hit the mouse. Hit the hit their mouse. Hit the buy market button, and that'll draw that market up. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. Where are you going to put your stop land? I'm going to put my stop one price bar back from the entry bar. So let's do that. Let's come in here, put our stop. There's several ways we can do it. We come in here, we right click on it and say add OCO. And then see those little tools? You draw, drag it up and down. There's a limit order on top and there's a stop order on bottom. I can drop that in there, just drop it, boom, just like that. Now I can move them independently. I can come in here and say, I want this one to be right here. And I want this one to be right here. And then I can come in and say, I want this one, edit. I want it to trail, oh, it's OCO down here, trail. Uh, let's go one price bar back. We say, okay, trail to break even. Um, we could use filter higher or lower, but we've only got one bar, so there's not going to be higher or lower. That would only be if you had like, I'm going to trail 10 bars back, filter higher or lower. Then it would be the lowest point of the last 10 bars back. That's kind of cool feature. I say, okay, if you want to trail behind areas of support. So there you go. Do it like that. All right, we're up $25. We're cooking with gas. We could put our limit order right there. So if it touches that previous high, we take our profits. We could put our limit order on those blue lights. If it touches those blue lights, we take our profits. We could come out here and say, I don't want to have my profits till it goes way up there. I'm just going to let the trailing stop, trail it up and take me out. If it turns around and comes back down, you don't have to use your limit order. You could take that off. But if we're going to put it, say, well, we'll put it right there. It'll probably use that blue light as an area of resistance. All right. That's pretty common. 
So that area of resistance coming in right there, and it'll probably hit that and back off. Well, if that's the case, land, bring your stop up to break even so it doesn't knock you out. Lose money. Okay. We can do that too. If I try to move it, it's going to say, hey, I'm moving it. You want to move it? Yes, I want to move it myself. Oh, uh, wait, wait a second. You move it yourself. All right. Do that then. So I brought it right up there underneath. So if it comes back, just stop us out with a real small loss. We want it to go, though. Maybe you're a little too close, Land. Put it right underneath that bar, that it's action bar. The action bar. Breaks below that flat bottom action bar, we'll get out. That would be a lower high, right? Or a lower low. Well, it wouldn't either, because that's still the same action bar. That's below that um, mathematically calculated high Kanashi point. So it's a little aggressive. It's a little aggressive. Where should it be if you weren't being aggressive? Well, if we weren't being aggressive, we'd be one price bar back because right here, if it breaks below that, then we're no longer making higher, higher, higher lows, right? We'd be making lower lows, but this is the action bar. So it's one price bar back, but that's got that high and ashy bar in there. So you could say, well, if it's got that flat bottom high and ashy bar, if it breaks below that, then we just want to get out. So either one, it's your choice, which is better land. It's not better. It's just either it's different. It's just different. It's more aggressive comes down, stops you out, and continues to rally, then you got to have a loss as the market went in your favor. If you hold it further back, well, the disadvantage is it could come further back and give you a bigger loss. Just what is your risk tolerance? Well, I want to know which is better. It's not. There's no better. It's just different. Because it could different, happen different things each time. This market's losing its mojo. People aren't buying. We got the green, though, on the MACD. It's turning. It's trying to go, but it's losing its mojo. If you don't want to lose any money, put it right at break even. Say, so if you break hit break even, I'm just going to get out. I can always get back in. If you don't want to lose money, don't let it lose money. Okay, we got stopped out. Doesn't mean it can't turn and go now and take off and go to the moon and we missed it, but it's just not being strong. It's using that those blue lines just as an area of resistance up there. It's got to break through there. You could stay in and say, well, I'm going to try and see if it's not going to go. Take another little risk. Yeah, there it goes, flush down. See, it's a good thing we got out. Came down and broke the previous low, so it's no longer making higher lows. It's now making lower lower lows. But it's just with a little bottoming tail. You could put your order for limit order to get in on that nine period moving average, right? So you could come in here and you can say, if it comes back down to the nine period moving average, I'd try to get in again. Or you could say, if it's going to break above the high right here, I'm going to get in. You could do that too. But we're playing. I want to go do some options. Let's go find some different markets. This is too not not exciting enough for me. Oh, where's my? There it is. Okay, so let's go back over to. Yeah, I've heard him say that too, Michael Bruce. But he's also sitting there with his finger on the trigger ready to pull it off. And he usually pulls it off at break even. So he, he mental stop. 250 shares going to the moon. <laughs> Big trade. All right. Uh, Michael's saying that maybe it's because I have too many applications running. But I run applications like this all the time. I mean, this is how I always run my trades, Michael Bruce. And today it's just not working. I mean, this is how I, I'm, I mean, I've got actually less applications running today than usual. So I think I've, I don't know. I don't know. I'm no technology guy. You might be right. Probably are. I know you are a technology guy, probably way so more so than me. So I don't know what else to turn off though. The only let, the next thing I got to turn off <laughs> would be 
the YouTube projection tool <laughs> so I could turn that off. Uh, that wouldn't work very good because then you couldn't see what I'm doing. All right. Come back here. What we're doing here. I'm getting sidetracked. Volume change. Let's go instead of in, in this. In, okay. Any in index. We're going to go back to the. Let's just look at the NASDAQ. AMD is the hot one today. AMD. But don't we have an. Oh, look. Netflix is up there, but it's just a tiny bubble. But it's a $619 per share. That'd be some expensive call options. AMD is the bigger one. What's this one? NVIDIA. That one's popping a little bit. That one's $865 a share too. Nothing's really, nothing's really exploding. Let's go look at AMD. Haven't we got AMD? Or have we had AMD in here before? We've had AMD in here before. Well, it says it's up, but it's not. What the heck is that? Didn't I say it's up, AMD? Oh, well, 1.5%. So that's not really up. Let's go to one minute, two minute. One minute's a little too small on these charts. So I go to the two minute. That's the smallest I want to go down. Oh, look at how ugly that thing is. Holy cow, that's a that's an ugly chart. Options, call options. Three days. Just do a three-day call option. $238. Buy that thing. Oh, it's way up there. Oh, it's way down there. $497. Delta of 67. So it's moving. Let's get in there. Get in there. Fight, fight, win. Land, fight, fight, win. Okay, so we got that thing in there. There's your little trend line. There's your little trend line coming into a pattern. It's the one that's showing that everybody wants to trade. So if anybody who wants to go long, this is the one they're going to be trading. So let's see if we can get some movement out of it to the upside. All right. So we got our call option. We got $535. How many did we do? We just did one, didn't we? Yeah, it's right there. Quantity one. $500. Theoretical value is $531. So it's actually worth more than what we're paying for it. Right now, the premium we're paying is $522. It's worth $529. That's about the same. Premium per day, that's a lot. It's got to move. So we got volume, got plenty of volume, plenty of open interest. What is this thing doing? Why is it jumping all over the place? There we go. All right, come on, baby. What is the other one we had running? Bank of America. Okay, we took a short position. It did rally a little bit, like I said. I thought it was going to kind of bounce up right there, and it did. Bounced up. We're in the green zone of the MACD. It means you don't want to be taking a short position during the green zone of the MACD. But we're short. This thing probably turn and rally. Bank of America, though, it's in our... Tesla's the other one that was down here. This is the NASDAQ. Let's go look at Tesla. Didn't we look at Tesla? We did, right? T-S-L-A. Oh, we have Tesla right there. Two-minute Tesla. What's it doing? Oh, it broke out of our wedge pattern, just like we said. Rallied up. Hit that 100-period moving average. Dropped right back down. It's hitting the blue lights right now. If it's going to continue down, it needs to cross those blue lights and go down and make that ABC pattern. So A, B, C, D. Or because this is higher highs and higher lows, could do this. We're at a decision point, aren't we? Boom, boom, and it could continue to rally. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? Well, everybody's seeing this thing is down. So usually they're going to pile on to the short side. We just don't have anything else in here to play with. NASDAQ 100. Let's look at the Dow. Oh, UNH. Oh, but that one thing's like $500. UNH, United Healthcare. It's up 5%. Let's go UNH, see what it's doing. Come on. 
Come on. What the heck is going on? What is taking all my bandwidth? I haven't got anything running. I got my web browser, my software, and that's it. United Health Group. Okay, it's got a big rally bar on it. Let's come and look at the two-minute chart. Oh, look, we were we were up four thousand dollars on the SPY at one point, weren't we? Oh no, we weren't. We were up three thousand. It's up three thousand five hundred. We made five hundred bucks on that thing in one day. Okay, UNH two minute bar. Okay, these are four hundred and seventy dollars share. Let's go see what we can get on an option. We want a put option. It looks like it's fallen, but didn't it say it was rising? Yeah, it's rising way up, but now it's pulling back. Look, it's drifting off. Had that big, huge shoot up, and now it's just dying. So $402 for a put option. Let's buy. $700 if we go up here. Let's stick with the, there's $500. We'll just put on two of those. Okay, so we got two put options on here. So we need that baby to fall. That 200 period moving average is sitting right down here. Just broke the 100. Let's see if it'll go down to the 200. Up $15. That's that put option we bought yesterday. It's still falling for us. Morgan Stanley, well, Morgan Stanley, we bought it. It went up, but now it's turning and coming back down. I don't like this one. It's dying on the vine. If it breaks those blue lights, which it's already done right there, I'm going to draw a line in the sand right here. If it drops below that, we're going to get out of that one. Take our, take our shiner. What about mags? Are we still in mags short? That's from the other day. What about how are we doing up here? Bank of America, it's still falling. We're up $9. I only took three because I was worried it was going to rally up out of there. But it rallied just a tiny bit, and now it's falling again. Now I feel bad we only took three, right? AMD, we bought a call option here in anticipation of the rally out of this turning and falling now too. What if we sold one up here? I know we weren't going to do all this fancy, crazy stuff, but it's fun. What if we sold a call up here? Where did that go? Way off the screen? It did. What if we sold that one? We'd collect $245, but that's not for three days. And we don't have anything less than that. We can't do a single day. I don't know if it would decay enough in this a few minutes that we're going to be playing this that it would make it worthwhile. How much is going to decay? Premium per day, $82. So it's about the best we could do is $80. If it didn't go up there for the whole day, that's not bad. $80. bucks. i would take $80. bucks. we would do two or three of them. How long many are we long one? We're only long one. We can only sell as many as we're long, right? Things just going sideways. We put a little iron condor on this thing. But we're long here. What if we went in here? Oh, we can do that. Should we do that just for fun? Let's come in here and see what happens. Let's mark it into that. Let's let that one go for a minute and see what happens. See if we can get some decay out of it. I don't know if we will. Mark is going to have to fall for that thing to get any profit because it's not going to decay fast enough. We're not going to be happy with that. We'll see. It's fun to do. There's an apple still falling. Uh, we're losing all of our money on apple. Turning lemons into lemonade. Turning lemonade into lemons. We're doing it backwards. Liquidate. 
get rid of that thing. We're losing too much money too fast. Market out of it. We're going to end up make, losing money. We were up like what? We were up like a thousand bucks on that thing and just took it off at $40. Market just came back too far too fast. We'll put it back on if we think it's going to bounce and rally again. But Apple just had some bad news. They're not doing very well. All right. Well, AMD, Bank of America. Yeah, it's bottoming out down here. MACD's turning and curling. There's our first candle to make a new high. We're up $10. Liquidate the option. Market out of that thing. Take our $10 profit. Oh, it's going to lose it. It's not going to let us out. Three, four, six. There, it's off the table. We didn't make anything that was scratch trade. What did we close that thing out at? Chart only. Then eh, we made $6. <laughs> Well, it is what it is. It is what it is. Can't be a titan on everyone. We're making good money on the spy right now, so we're happy about that. Not happy the market's fallen, but they'll give us an opportunity to buy low, sell high, get back into this market when it gets down here a little ways. Make some money while it's fallen. Hopefully you guys aren't long the Long the stock market with a whole bunch of stocks from the S&P 500. I'm completely in cash. I don't have anything in there. Took it all out right about there. I took most of it out at the top of the third drive, which was right here. So this was drive one, drive two, drive three. That's where I got out. I took most of my positions out there. And then when it broke those blue lights and said it was going to go more, I added a couple in just in case, a couple of those high flyers, but then I got out of them all right here as it started to break. I was like, that was dumb land. Uh, you know better than that. Easy to borrow. See up there in the top right corner, it's easy to borrow. That means you can take short positions on it. You can, you can, you can sell shares rather than have to take a short with the option. Okay, let's see. All right, I think we've run the gamut of this one. There's just not a whole lot to play with. When the S&P 500 has fallen like that, we don't get a whole lot of long positions to, to jump into. So Johnson and Johnson. <laughs> Heard a funny joke about them yesterday. Let's go look at JPM before we call it quits. Didn't we look at JPM already, though? JPM. Yeah. J.P. Morgan Chase, falling like a rock. Oh, look at him go. Drive one, counter trend. We're in that drive two, going down, still falling. What would an option be on that thing? Three days out, $185. I don't know if you want to take that one or not. It's only 9 o'clock. There's lots of downside potential on this thing. Lots of time. Kind of missed the initial break of the blue lights, but that would be your first drop. This would be your little counter trend, right? And then we'd look for the next drop. So that would be drive one, look for a drive two. See if it comes back, touches those blue lights and wants to fall again. Let's give it a few minutes. See what it wants to do. It might just sit here and die right just go sideways not do anything just kind of go through the sideways channel if that's the case you can sell some premium try and collect some premium that way just let it die on the vine probably not going to get a big rally out of it not if it dropped like that out of the gate and not a lot of people want to buy it so we could put on something like a, we could put a chicken wing on, right, Michael Bruce? Little three-day chicken wing. Sell a call up here. $92, $37. 
92 and then you have to buy your insurance buy a call up here $37 make $55 22% but that's over three days so what it's going to do over the next four hours you just have to stay below that red line to pick up a little bit of money but if it rallied it would show a loss even though you're below the red line needs to stay down there. It needs to go down for that to make money. It would need to go down. So if it goes up, that strategy right there over the short term is not going to make any money. Have to stay below that red line for three days. Could very well do it, though. It's 100. It's your 100. There's your 200. But usually when we get a fall like that, we get a little pull back, right? We get that little ABC top and then it falls again. Not sure if that's going to happen this time, where that's going to go. Where's our Fibonacci ruler? From the bottom to the top. It'll probably end up right down in here somewhere. So we got some downside potential. question is you want to do it with a strategy like this or you just want to buy a put option how much is a put option put option in here is 162 dollars for three days what's your max profit on that well it's unlimited you make as much money as the market wanted to fall problem is already had three four big down days it's probably due for a little rally a little pop back up hasn't hit 38.2 on the fibonacci scale yet though that 100-period moving average is right down there looming just above the 38.2. I think we got too much area of support right here to be taking a short position for a longer-term day trade. Uh, just for fun, we're going to put this one on. It's $55. Let's do... Gonna make it worth our while. Let's do five of them. It's two hundred and sixty-five dollars. Yeah, we'll see. Let's get into this one. See what that does for us. All right, it gave it to us. Just need it to die down there. We don't need it to. We don't need it to fall. We don't need it. We don't want it to rally. We don't want it to rally. It can just go sideways. As long as it just kind of dies from here, it goes anywhere down in here, we'll be okay. Last thing we want, we just don't want it to go up. And we are kind of down here where it's swinging, right? It might swing, swing down, swing back up. If it does, well, it'll be a small loss. As long as it may go up and then back down again. All right, guys, we're going to tie it up here. I have a little Sunday school lesson for you. Here's my Sunday school lesson. Don't overtrade. There are over 15,000 stocks to a hammer. Everything looks like a nail. Narrow down your opportunities. Wait, hammer. No. Quiet nail. That's not a nail. That's a screw. So oftentimes what happens is every, you know, as new traders, sometimes we go through and we scan through all the charts and it looks like there's an opportunity on every single one of them. We should be in all these stocks. Be careful with that, you know, settle down and um, be a little bit more cautious, be a little bit more careful and make sure you whittle yourself down to just the right stocks and just the right ones. Michael Bruce says, I've been reeling in the demo cash when it comes on to options. Reeling, does that mean bad? You've been reeling? You've not been doing well? Trade your patterns. Trade your probabilities. A1s, B1s, C1s. Make sure you're taking your probabilities, spending time doing your analysis, and know where your probabilities are and only take the high probability trades. You'll do better at it if you'll do that. If you'll just focus on your probability trading, then you'll do a lot better at it. We do a little bit of jumping around in here and doing a little crazy stuff because we've only got an hour, hour and a half to trade. And so I, try, I probably do, and I keep trying to, Oh, he says he makes a lot. 
Oh, okay. So you're doing well. All right. So I know you're very good at your counts and measures. I know you pay very close attention to your, your odds. So, um, I'm glad that reeling in this case meant good. <laughs> reeling in. Okay. So I know Michael Bruce is very good at doing the, um, counts and measures. I know he sticks to that. So just watch your, watch your probability tables. Lane, where can I get that probability table? Well, it's in my book. Um, go to Amazon stock market playbook of strategy, search Lion H Turner and all the probabilities are in that book. All right. So you can come down here and see if I can show you a probability table, but they're all right in here. This is how we count. This is how we measure. This is how we go through the probabilities. See A's, B's, C's. This is how we measure these markets. This is all the probability tables. So this is how you want to go through and you want to learn all the probabilities of what each different level is, and it's all in the book. So this is the manual to the class. It's on Amazon. You can pick it up. It's got all kinds of examples. Here's where all your probabilities are. A's, B's, C's, what the probabilities are. All right. So pick up that book if you need the probability table. It'll help you. And we will catch you guys. Same bat channel, same bat time. Tomorrow we'll do it again. All right. We'll see you.